Hi, my name is Yifeng. Today I'm going to present our paper, Real-Time Spatial Temporal LiDAR Point Call Compression. This is a joint work with Shao Shan Liu and Yu Hao Zhu. As we know, LiDAR has become an essential sensor in many robotic applications, such as autonomous driving. Real-time data sharing enables autonomous machines to make collaborative decisions with each other or offload compute-intensive perception tasks to the cloud. However, typical LiDAR devices can generate 26 megabytes of raw data per second. To mitigate data transfer pressure, we need an efficient point call compression for real-time data sharing. Existing point call compression techniques mainly target on three main tasks, free viewport events, cultural heritage, and autonomous driving. Previous studies have been focused on the first two, which don't have to be real-time or deal with dynamic point call frames. However, as autonomous driving become a buzzword recently, people start to pay attention to real-time compression technique for LiDAR-generated point cloud. Here, we show the LiDAR standing right in front of a cylinder. The way the LiDAR works is that it will fire a set of laser beams at a certain horizontal angle. And this set of beams are spread at fixed vertical granularity as the animation shows. After laser beams have been fired, LiDAR will wait for the responses that bounce back from the object and measure the time of flight in order to calculate the distance between the object and itself. Then it will rotate at a fixed horizontal angle and fire the laser beams again and measure the time of flight and so on and so forth until it finishes the entire 360 horizontal scan. After entire 360 horizontal scan, we will get a complete point cloud. Although point cloud data looks irregular in 3D space, we can convert LiDAR generated point cloud into a regular data structure called range image due to the fixed vertical and horizontal granularity of the LiDAR scan. So the values in the same row will have the same vertical angle and the values in the same column will have the same horizontal angle. This is the first step in our methods, as many previous studies did. However, unlike previous study, which applies image compression directly on range image, we did something different. Before we introduce our method, let's understand why using image compression is inefficient in compressing range image. First, a typical LiDAR device has a 120 meters effective distance with 0.02 meters position. Using image compression will lose detailed spatial information by normalizing range value into a color domain, which is from 0 to 255. Second, image compressions target for visual appearance. However, intelligent applications target for application accuracy. Third, many image-specific techniques such as discrete cosine transform don't apply to range image. So we introduce our method, which has two components, spatial encoding and temporal encoding. Now let's look at spatial encoding first. Our spatial encoding is inspired by the fact that physical worlds consist of many plates, and many objects can be approximate using multiple plates. So the key idea here is to fit a range image using multiple plates. The way we do it is to apply a divide and conquer technique. We first divide the entire range image into small tiles. In this example, it's a 2x2 two two tile. And then we try to fit the small tile using a plate with a predefined error threshold. In this example, the first tile can be fit. Then we will move on to the second tile and test whether the second tail can be fit using the first tail's coefficient. Now, the second tail cannot be fit. Then we store the first tail's coefficient with additional number one, which stands for this set of coefficient can only fit one tail. Then we will try to fit the second tail by itself. In this particular case, the second tail cannot be fit. Then we have to store the raw data value. 
Then we'll move on to third tail. The third tail can be fit. Then we'll move on to fourth tail and fifth tail. In this particular case, the fourth tail and fifth tail can be fit together. So we only need to store one set of coefficients with the additional number 2. The last tail cannot be fit, then we store the raw data value. In the end, we just need a bit map to represent which tail can be fit and which tail cannot. To be noticed that we only group tails horizontally instead of vertically. The reason is that existing NIDAR systems has much more fine-grained horizontal resolution than vertical resolution. The next question would be how to encode multiple frames in a real-time NIDAR harvesting. The naive way to do it is use multiple threads to encode multiple frames in parallel. However, by doing so, it doesn't leverage an important fact that many information across multiple frames are redundant. Here, we showed five consecutive frames all together. As we can see, 99% of region is overlapped. To avoid encoding redundant information across frames, we introduced our temporal encoding method. Back to the previous example, these five consecutive frames are overlapped, but they are not aligned with each other. That is because each point cloud has its own coordinate system. In order to fit planes across a sequence of point clouds, we convert all point clouds into the same coordinate system. In this case, it's a middle frame using the IMU measurements. As we can see, after transformation, the frames are more or less aligned. Then we convert the transformed point cloud into the range image. Now, the converted range image has multiple channels. Each channel represents one point cloud. Naturally, we will think, can we divide the range image into small tiles and try to fit each tile across multiple channels? The answer is no, because of the cross-transformation from the MU. In the small scale, the points in different channels cannot fit using a single plane, as the example showing on the right. In this example, these five planes are not aligned, and they are perpendicular to the screen. But the planes in different channels are more or less parallel with each other. Here, we propose our idea to encode. Instead of encode all channels at once, we fit the first channel first, and get a play function x plus ay plus bz plus c1 equals to 0. And we know for two parallel plays, the only difference is the offset, which is the coefficient c. Then we keep the coefficients a and b the same and try to find a new coefficient c value for the second channel. The way we do it is to plug in all the points in the second channel into the play function and find a new coefficient c for each point. And then we calculate the average c2 among these new coefficient c's and test whether this new coefficient c can be used to fit the second channel. This process will repeat for channel 3, 4, and 5. If all channels can be fit using this method, then we only need to encode 8 parameters instead of 20 parameters. In addition to additional compression rate, temporal encoding also speed up the compression process due to the fact that play fitting dominate compression time. Using temporal encoding, we can achieve 1.2 times speed up against spatial encoding only method. The overall temporal encoding is similar to spatial encoding. We first divide the range image into small tiles, and then we follow the same fit and test process. In this case, the first tile can be fit. Then we move on to the second tile and test whether the second tail can be fit using the first tail's coefficient. Let's say the second tail cannot. Then we store the first tail's coefficient with the additional number 1, and try to fit the second tail by itself. In this case, the second tail cannot be fit. Then we move on to the third tail, 
the third tail cannot be fit. Then we move on to the fourth tail and fifth tail. In this particular case, we, these two tails can be fit together. So we only need to store one set of coefficient with additional number two. The last tail cannot be fit, then we finish the entire temporal encoding. After temporal encoding, we will try to fit each channel individually using spatial encoding method. In the end, we just need a bitmap to represent which tail uses temporal encoding and which tail uses spatial encoding. Now, put things together, we first apply motion composition to transform all point clouds into the same coordinate system, and then convert the transformed point cloud into range image. And we further fit range image into temporal encoding and spatial encoding to get fitted data. Last, we encode the fit data use lossless encoding to get final encoded data format. In our experiments, we evaluate our method on three different robotic applications with two datasets, KT and segmented KT. And we compare our method against four baselines, GPCC, VPCC, JPEG, and H264. GPCC is the impact proposed standard compression to encode sparse point cloud. And the VPCC is the impact proposed standard to encode relatively dense and uniform spread point cloud. JPEG is standard image compression. And the last one is H264, which is standard video compression technique. In our evaluation, we have two variants. The first one only uses spatial encoding, and the second one uses both spatial and temporal encoding. We test our method both on desktop and mobile SOC. Desktop is aimed to mimic the high-end devices in applications such as autonomous car. And mobile SOC is aimed to mimic small mobile devices such as drone or small robots. First, let's see the registration results. Here, the x-axis showed the compression rate, and the y-axis showed the translation error. We first show the state of our result. Then we show our methods. As we can see, our method occupied the frontier of parental optimal. Same trend can be observed in object detection. X-axis showed the compression rate, and the Y-axis showed accuracy. Again, we first show the state of art. Then let's see our result. Our method can achieve high compression rate while preserving the accuracy. In scene segmentation, we first show the state of our results. And then we let's see our results. As we can see, our method is better than most of the methods, except for VPCC. However, VPCC is not a real-time compression method. Later, we will show that VPCC is much slower than our method. Here we show the compression speed. The x-axis shows the compression rate, and the y-axis shows the frame per second. We pick up 10 frames per second as real-time because typical LiDAR devices operate on 10 frames per second. We first show the result of state of art. As we can see, only video compression can achieve real-time. Next, let's see our result. Our method can achieve real-time. In conclusion, efficient point cloud compression will enable autonomous machines to be more connected with each other and with cloud. By exploring spatial and temporal redundancy across point cloud, our real-time compression method achieves up to 90 times compression rate with high application accuracy. In addition, we open source our code on GitHub. Please check out our GitHub page. Thanks for watching.